we'll continue our MBC Flutter series where we left off. In the last video, I had simply switched out the import statements. In truth, actually just commented out and reintroduced some export statements to switch out the interface as well as the data source of a particular application. Let's do that again. Right now we're in the counter app. If I go, let's just retreat back here, go back to the source folder. I'm dealing with the home screen, so let's go to the home directory. I'm dealing with the interface, so let's go to the view. I want to change the export statement. We're using the counter app. I'm going to change that now to the name generator. See how easily that's done now, of course, in, in the process of developing your software, you'll have different aspects of your software that are ready for production, for example. And it'll be just a simple matter of switching out the export statements. This file in turn is referenced here, right there. And this file, it's itself is referenced in the source code. So we can go here, for example, and there it is right there. Let's do this now. I've gone here. I've switched out the counter. Here is the counter interface, both for the Android and the iOS platform. But now I'm introducing the name generator. Let's do that also for the model. Right now, we're taking in the data for counter app. Let's comment that out. Let's put in the name generator. One more change I have to make, of course, is in the model for the name generator. Right now, it's supplying the, the data field of the counter app. Now I want to modify that to provide the data field for the name generator. Why am I doing that? Because the name generator, its interface is looking for, again, there's the separation of the interface from the data, from the event handling. I turned to the name generator application as and realized it's more data driven. Troller, which generally supplies the data, is going to be one of the same. I've decided to opt for this configuration, where the class is, in fact, a mix of controller aspects and the model. So this class is also the event handler and the data source, and the view is separate. So there's, there's two classes involved three capabilities. Okay, so for the Android version, you see that this class extends state MBC. So you readily know that this is in fact involving the view. In other words, the interface of the application. It's registering a controller. So when you introduce that controller into the constructor, that controller now has every aspect of a state object. It can actually call the set state function, for example. Further still, this view takes in another controller in the form of the model. I'm adding it here, allowing me then to switch back and forth from Android to iOS. But I'll explain that in yet another video. For now, let's just introduce this model. Where's this coming from? You can tell at a glance it's coming from the stateful widget counterpart. So where's that? That's the home page. Let's take a look. Here it is. In the initialization statement, we see that it's being model is being instantiated to a final instant variable called model. Here, by the way, is the mechanism used 
to switch back and forth from Android to iOS. Again, we'll explain that in the next video. Here's the model. Let's examine this. You'll discover that it too is a controller because it simply extends the controller.mvc class. It uses singleton pattern because it has the factory constructor. This allows us, when we switch back and forth from Android to iOS platform, it retains the items that have been selected in the word pairs. If you're familiar with the Write Your First Flutter app demo, there's a series of hearts on the right hand side of the scrolling list and you click on them and they turn red. Retaining this model in memory as a singleton instance allows you to retain any selected word pairs for both the material design pattern and for the Cupertino design pattern, i.e. for the Android platform or for the iOS look and feel. Watch this now. Again, the model utilizes composition to take in the true model for the Write Your First Flutter app demo. Uh, here is its API, the list of names that you use to access its information to utilize its functionality. You'll notice that I follow the same API used by the Flutter framework itself, as well as, of course, aspects of the Write Your First Flutter app demo app. Here we are in the iOS version, and here is the Android version. More specifically, here is the material version using these particular widgets found for the material design. And here is the Cupertino with its appropriate widgets. But we'll examine them side by side and we will realize that they, they have a common characteristic. Both take in, both take in quote controllers that are used to respond to any events that may occur. In this case, with the clicking of buttons as well as providing the data. Here is a model being assigned a value in the init state method, the init state function for this state object. Up here, of course, we have the controller, as I said, that is initiated, registered, and instantiated right at the beginning. Goes into the state MVC class, comes out from a getter from that framework and assigned to a particular instant variable, controller. It's not immutable, doesn't have to be being a state object. That's wonderful. Now this controller is being used in this case here to address an event. When we examine this widget closely, we see that there's a leading name parameter that calls a button when pressed. I have yet another property in the controller called leading. I'm following this approach in that, again, in a scenario where you would have the application broke up into these three components, data, interface, event handling, you can envision three separate teams of developers. Well, how do they talk to each other? They just simply know that they, all the teams are utilizing the Flutter Framework's own API. So when the project manager instructs the developer responsible for the interface to create an entry for the leading name parameter, that developer knows that there is a corresponding leading property for the event. So on pressed, here is the event handler. Now, that is just one aspect. That one is addressing that event, pressing of a button in the navigation bar. The controller 
and many times is responsible for providing the data as well. In this configuration, for example, the view and the model don't even know that each other's exist. The view simply talks to the controller and the controller talks to the model and that's it. In this scenario, we have the controller and model merged and they're talking back to the view. We'll demonstrate that. In this class, there's yet another controller. In fact, I'll call it a model controller that in this case is added here. It's registered. In other words, it's just like introducing it to the constructor. It's registered with the state object, allowing now this model controller to talk to the view, to talk to the state object, and this more specifically to call the set state once it's ready. So this model, unimaginably called it model, you can call it whatever you like, quite frankly, knowing full well that it extends the controller MVC and it is the source of the data. Here, just like the original, right, your first Flutter app, we have it accessing the data, providing the data, well as addressing any event handling on tap is greeted with a corresponding on tap method found in this model controller. You can have the interface update itself or because it's registered with the state object, you can have the model when it's ready to call set state. Let's go here. And there it is. Now, see this there again, the separation, there should be a level of abstraction. In other words, the interface developer should be looking for the corresponding title entry. I've left this out to demonstrate this. Further, there should be a trailing entry in the model controller. Let's go in there. And sure enough, there is. So let's keep it consistent. In other words, let's keep the API consistent. I'm going to go introduce string get title like so right current as Pascal yeah see what I've done now go back to the interface that means now at this level, the developer only knows of this. There's an entry called title. There's a property found in the model controller called title. Further still. Now, there's with this level of abstraction, there's some freedom there here. There's some options. You don't know what this is. You know that it's here. This named parameter describes an instant variable of type string and a trailing variable of type widget. And that's all that we provide here. The developers at this aspect of the application need only know that there's a model controller called title and there is a model controller property called trailing. It doesn't know it's an icon and it doesn't know we initiate a Pascal case. We're free to change that now. Change that to whatever we like. So you're, you're not affecting now the interface. You, before, if you had to, you had to actually go and step on other people's toes. You had to go into the realm of the interface and change as camel case instead of simply changing it here where you belong. This is your area of responsibility. You are the developer of the data source and of the event handling. You work in here and in here alone. Just retain the common API and that you simply reference the Flutter framework itself. That's how that works. So that's it. Let's see. Let's let's run this thing. 
and see how that goes. I will just run it. I'll speed it up, of course, speed up the video, get past all the compiling, and show you what we what we have. And then demonstrate again the separation of the logic. This level of abstraction. I'll put a breakpoint there, for example, and see how that works. And there we are. Okay. So I put a breakpoint on tap. This will make that turn into a heart. Turn that heart icon to a different icon. Filled in red. So if I click here, nothing happened. How come? <laughs> I know why. I'm in the iOS version. So if I click here, there we are. Now, let's just step through it. So this model controller is answering the call. There's been a tap and an event triggered. This segment of code is to address it. Again, back there, in the interface, we don't know how it's going to address it. We just know it will. In this, this delegate provides an index. In other words, which entry in that list view, in this sliver list in this case, has been selected. That indicates it. What happens? Go in there. Again, this model controller allows talks back to the view. See that arrow, the second arrow there. When it's done, it'll refresh the screen. The home screen. This screen. That will be a, suddenly appears red. Again, there's further separation here. Of course, the rest of the app doesn't know this, but the developers of this part of the application, the model part, has enlisted the original class involved in the Write Your First Flutter app. So when this class was first instantiated, it, using the composition, it instantiated yet another class. And we call, in this case, its on tap routine. Do we know what it does? We don't care what it does at this point. But it does it. We know full well what it does, of course. It puts this into a separate list called Suggestions. And we click on yet another screen to see all the selected word pairs. So let's just run that. Having run that, it called Set State, and there we are. Now those two are selected, so you can click on this button here. And there they are. go to the material version sure enough it too is selected and that's pretty much it let's leave it at that for this video get appreciation of the separation of work the separation of responsibility how we utilize the flutter framework's own api to provide some consistency again all this allows for faster development and better maintainability of the software itself. All right. Next video course, we'll introduce how this is done.